What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1997 Stuart Stevenson M1078. Under me is a 6.6 .6 liter turbocharged diesel straight six as well as a seven speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Stuart Stevenson for a couple of reasons, but mainly the fact that it's huge, it's strange, and unlike anything I've ever reviewed before. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers as well as other merchandise when it becomes available. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form and you get a video just like this one. And you can read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But first I want to talk to you guys about what the heck this thing is. Well, Stuart and Stevenson was founded in 1902 as a blacksmith company that would produce horseshoes and other things. In the 1920s, they started building bodies for GMC trucks, and that's how they got started with vehicles like this. In the 1950s, they started building aircraft ground support equipment. In the 1960s, they started building gas turbine powered boats. And in the 1990s, they started building rail kings, which is a way to move rail cars around in a yard. But in the 1980s, the US military was looking for a new construction for military vehicles and so Stuart and Stevenson won the contract with this vehicle here and so in the mid 90s they started producing them for the US military these are used as troop transporters as well as just supplies they can be dropped out of an airplane and they're rugged as all hell speaking of which let's get back to that 6.6 .6 liter diesel under me it is a turbo diesel inline six making about 225 horsepower but well over 600 foot-pounds of torque. It is a Caterpillar engine, and Caterpillar is mostly known for building forklifts, at least here in the United States, but they also build heavy-duty engines like the one found in this. Like I said, paired to its seven-speed automatic transmission, I was really not expecting so many gears. However, it actually starts the vehicle in second gear. First gear is really a granny gear, and it's all push-button shifting off to left. Interestingly, it also doesn't have a park gear. You put it into neutral and then pull the air parking brake. Kind of fun. Last but not least, the M1078 is four-wheel drive all the time, which is kind of interesting. There is no two-wheel drive setting. But what is it like to drive? Well, let's do a little acceleration test here. There we go, shift. There we go. Now it's shifting. <laughs> oh man, this thing is a behemoth to drive. First of all, you sit up above everyone else. Everything is clunky, everything is heavy duty. Everything feels very, very heavy. Even the seven speed automatic, which I normally associate with vehicles like a Mercedes, it's not like that. It's not a dual clutch. It might as well be made of sticks and stones, but sticks and stones don't break. They're reliable. And that was kind of the point of this vehicle. It does have power steering, which is a very, very nice feature. And it is a cab over truck, meaning the wheels are actually below me. So turning, you kind of have to put your body in front of the turn. Kind of an interesting sensation. But with that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. We'll work left to right. Upper left-hand corner, I do have my radiator fan turn off for going through deep water, as well as lamp test. This will basically show me my warning lights, make sure that they're working. And then I have a starter fluid button to the far right. And because this engine doesn't have glow plugs, it will actually spray a little bit of starter fluid to help cold start the engine. Then I have my shifter. Like I said, push button shifter and those arrows are actually to manually shift up and down if that's something you wanna do. If you wanna put it into first gear, that's how you do it. And I do have some different modes as well. Then I get three typical gauges, front air brake pressure up at the top, rear air brake pressure in the center, and then fuel down at the bottom. This gets about five miles to the gallon. Then in the center, I do get my warning light cluster as well as my speedometer. And then I have my oil pressure, battery voltage, and water temperature. Then up to the right, I have my ignition. That's that green one. The yellow would be if you installed a light up at the top. And then my hazard switch. Then I get a pressure gauge as well as this big red button. When the green button up above it is turned on, you hit this and that's what turns the vehicle on. 
There are no keys. Out in the battlefield, you can't be fumbling with, oh, who has the keys? You just gotta get in and go. Then I have my headlight settings, so I can leave the headlights and turn signals completely off if I want to. Even when I hit the switch, they won't engage. This is for night operations. And then I can turn them on to where just the brake lights and turn signals work, or everything is working. Then up to the upper right, I do have a throttle hold again to help either pump up the air pumps or to let it warm up and idle. The steering wheel is gigantic. However, it does have power steering, so it's actually not the worst thing in the world. And off to the left on the door, I do have a crank for the window, latch to get in and out, and that's pretty much it. Moving into the center, I do have my tachometer as well as my winch controls. We'll talk about that in a second. And then I have my trailer air supply and my air parking brakes. So this is equipped with air brakes, which I am still getting used to. My little pedestrian self, as you can see, coming up to a stop sign. Still getting used to that. But down below, we have more air controls. And this is actually for the tire inflators. So while driving around, I can actually change the PSI in the tires and it will go all the way down to five PSI. That's emergency mode and that'll get you out of any rut you can think of. Then moving off into the very center, we do have our climate controls. These are just heater controls. However, later models, the A1s and A2s actually had optional air conditioning. Very, very interesting for a military vehicle. Unfortunately, the interior of the M1078 does not have a cup holder, so it fails the big friggin' bottle test. Now we gotta talk about the seats, and these seats are actually out of a Dodge Challenger, so they don't really count. However, what is interesting is that from the factory, these are three-seater trucks, so you get a driver's seat, passenger seat, and then a center passenger seat, which they are positioned underneath a big circle in the ceiling, which, when optioned, if the military wanted it to, could turn it into the deadliest sunroof the world has ever seen. You can mount a machine gun to the top. That's pretty much it for the interior, but let's do a clockwise walk around the exterior. So starting off by the passenger door, I actually have a lot of air controls. I can lift up the cab. That's actually how you get to the engine via the air system. You can also lower the spare tire with the air system. Then I do get obviously the diesel fuel tank and then this red thing is an 11 thousand pound winch that can either be ran through the front or rear of the vehicle that's for those winch settings that i was talking about earlier that is absolutely awesome then i do have some cubbies these are for the sides of the bed you can actually take them off and then put them into these storage containers to make this into a flatbed. Then I have these hooks that will extend. This is for air extractions or lifting the vehicle up via these hooks to load it onto something, whatever it might be. Then we come around the back. The back will seat between 14 and 15 people. Right now it is set up with those benches for the troop variant of this truck. And it does have a nice little ladder that comes out of the back that you could place on the side to help getting people in and out. Then we have more hooks for transporting. Then we have our air tanks, which you can purge the tanks as well as on top, you have your batteries. Then we have our hydraulic fluid container with a bunch of dipsticks for like transmission fluid and fill fluid and things like that. And then we have our sweet stack exhaust. But let's do an actual walk around of the truck. And this thing just looks absolutely awesome. It's massive. However, it's what I would expect because this thing was designed and built not only to be reliable and cheap to manufacture, but this can go through four feet of water and be totally, totally fine. This thing will never ever get stuck in the mud. Although I'm sure people have, but not in most terrain. This can tackle it all. And it's so obvious that it can do that. This thing just looks big and brawny and quite frankly badass now this does pose one little issue and when little i mean kind of big issue is getting into it it's not very comfortable it's not very easy to do but you do get this little ladder attached to a cable because when the cab folds up this seat would puncture the tire if it was rigidly mounted it's just a crazy crazy experience getting up into this thing and then driving it so Let's talk about my final thoughts 
driving this giant behemoth m1078 ao well it's quite the unique experience it engages your sight smell hearing and occasionally taste but when driving this i really truly feel unstoppable because i am i can drive over or through anything i want and that's why a lot of people actually buy these to make into campers that passenger area in the back you could put a cargo cover or a tent over and well now you have a dorm room actually it's bigger than most dorm rooms i've stayed in and that to me is super super cool this is such a cool piece of american history which is actually still getting used in one form or another i mean just think of all the people this truck has liberated think of all of the missions and late nights and early mornings that have been done in trucks like this and especially this truck this is a high mileage version with 84,000 miles on it it's no spring chicken this is the unstoppable brute of the american force and although this is almost a 20,000 pound truck this is still considered a light truck when it comes to the military and that to me is so so cool huge thank you to steve for letting me take out this military truck i'm getting tired of saying the name the military was not very cool at naming their uh, trucks but huge thank you to Steve when diesel isn't a thousand dollars a gallon Steve Daly's this my hat is off to you sir huge thank you to him for letting me take this thing out this was such a unique and cool experience and I hope to drive more military vehicles like it but I hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to rate the video comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it take care guys